Some of you have commented about a letter that was said to have been sent by the Chief of Intelligence of the NYPD regarding the so-called and so-dubbed near-catastrophic car chase with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle in May of 2023, which is also referenced in this judgment and has since hit the news again, which I find particularly interesting. Let's take a look at this. Uh, but before we get started, if you're new to my channel, please do hit that subscribe button. And even, even if you're not new to my channel, please do, because about 60% of you don't. And that's the only thing I ask of you. So let's get on with this. So this uh, judgment in the recent um, court case where the judge denied Prince Harry uh, the review of his security provisions in the UK, essentially ruling that the um, decision was lawful, it was not unfair, etc., which I've covered in another video, refers to this particular letter at paragraph 135 and says, on the last day of the hearing before me, Miss Fatima King's counsel produced a copy of a letter dated 6th of December 23 from the Chief Intelligence of NYPD. The letter is addressed to the Chief Superintendent OCU Commander Royalty and Speciality Protection. The Chief of Intelligence says that he wishes to make the two, uh, Chief Superintendent aware of certain changes to the security posture that will be afforded to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex in light of the security incident that took place on May 16th, 23 in New York City. Um, that, of course, being the so-called near-catastrophic car chase that supposedly went on for two hours. More about that in a minute. The letter says that a thorough review of the incident has taken place, and although no formal charges were brought against the parties involved at the time, quote, we did conclude that the behaviour in question was reckless. As a result, redacted text, beginning with an upcoming trip in the current weeks. The investigation had found reckless disregard of vehicle and traffic laws, persistently dangerous and unacceptable behaviour on the part of the paparazzi during the night in question. They had operated vehicle scooters and bicycles in a manner that forced the security team, which included NYPD lead car, to take evasive action on several occasions and a circuitous route to avoid being struck by pursuing vehicles on trapped or, or trapped on side blocks. The conclusion was, and this is the interesting bit here, the conclusion was that there was sufficient evidence to arrest two individuals for reckless endangerment. Repeat for emphasis, the conclusion was that there was sufficient evidence to arrest two individuals for reckless endangerment. And then there's redacted text at the end of this paragraph. However, not only is that a little bit strange in itself for a number of reasons, because if you recall, the mayor of New York said that he'd be very surprised if it was a two-hour chase, and in fact, a 10-minute chase would be extremely dangerous. And the comment section was flooded by people that live in New York and said, that's preposterous, there's no way that there would be a two-hour chase in New York, let alone a high-speed chase. Um, if there were a two-hour chase, they'd end up somewhere else. Uh, so most people didn't buy that. And since I don't live in New York, I should really trust the people that do live in New York to say that that probably didn't happen. Um, that was their view. That's what they left in the comments. But it wasn't just them either. There was plenty of other sources and resources to look at, such as um, recent articles uh, that have now said that there are sources in NYPD. This was published uh, a couple of days ago, the 28th of February and says that sources tell the New York Post that there is not sufficient evidence to charge anyone. Um, and it refers here that a British court, as part of its decision uh, to deny Prince Harry state-funded security, it's not completely the case, it's rather that it's a bespoke ad hoc security provision, but more about that in, in a previous video that I'll link below. And the article says that the New York Police Department sources told the Post that the case has been thoroughly proved by both the force and Manhattan District Attorney, and no charges are likely to be filed. And while the probe found reckless and unacceptable behaviour by paparazzi, Harry and Meghan's security contributed to the conditions by not adhering to the NYPD proposed stop, police sources said. And most interestingly, further down here, it said about this subsequent letter, it says here which sources say was sent in error by law enforcement officials to Harry and Meghan's security detail, which created confusion by suggesting two suspects had been identified and could face arrest for reckless endangerment over the high-speed chase. 
And the article says that on the one hand, whilst this letter seems to back up their story, this seems to be short-lived. Because it then says that the claims of an hour-long near-catastrophic relentless pursuit by a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi after they left the Women of Visions Award Gala on the night of May 16th were laughed off by the media and New Yorkers alike, many of whom doubted the physical possibility of such a chase in a cramped and gridlocked city streets. Even Whoopi Goldberg was quoted to say, I think people in New York know if it was possible to have a car chase in New York, we'd all make it to the theatre on time. And so this begs the question as to what weight this letter really did play in this hearing, if any at all. And my view is that it probably didn't. Although we can't be entirely sure because the end section is also redacted. There was a couple of lines or an, even an entire paragraph, it would seem, at the end of this letter that was redacted that we cannot read. But what I can also say, having read the judgment, is that there is no other reference to the arrest or even potential arrest of any individuals whatsoever. And whilst the judgment does refer back to the contents and the substance of this letter uh, from paragraphs 209, it doesn't seem to have had any material difference. Paragraph 209 says, it is in light of this important point that the letter of the 6th of December 23 from the Chief of Intelligence of NYPD needs to be considered. As noted, contrary to what appears to have entered the public domain, the letter states that reckless endangerment did take place on the 16th of May 23 when the claimants and Duchess were being driven in Manhattan. Now note here that the judge is simply pointing out what the letter says, not making a finding of fact as such. It just says, as noted, contrary to what appears to have entered the public domain, i.e. that this couldn't have happened, the letter states that reckless endangerment did take place when they were being driven in Manhattan. And then the remaining bits are redacted. But paragraph 210 is also important when it says the claimant, Prince Harry, suggests that if a photographer is able to get so close to the vehicle in which the claimant is travelling in order to take a photograph of him, then so too could someone with intent to harm him. Whilst this may be true, the judge says, it sheds no light on the risk of there being persons with such hostile intent. Then at paragraph 211, the judge talks about the complaints about arrangements for the claimant's visits in March and June 23 concern in part the issue of redacted. But then says, in view of what I've just said, these complaints are wrongly directed at Ravik. They cast no retrospective doubt on the legality of the decision of the 28th of February, that was the decision to change the security provisions, or disclose any discrete error in the arrangements made by Ravik for the claimant's attendances at the RCJ. That was when he bumped into a photographer. So all of these things, whilst the judge has pointed out the letter, referenced the letter, and in essence, considered it, has ultimately dismissed it in that it doesn't shed any light on any risk of there being persons with such hostile intent, and also said that it doesn't cast any doubt on Ravik's decision. And so whilst the letter was considered, it didn't really appear to have any material impact. But what I find really interesting about this situation is that no sooner this judgment was released, sources were willing to talk to the New York Post, who appear to be high-ranking sources, to say that despite what was written in this letter, the sources tell the Post that there is not sufficient evidence evidence to charge anyone. So that simply wasn't true, according to these sources. So make of all that what you will. The, the redacted portions of the letter, the fact that the judge referred to this letter, but that it ultimately didn't affect the court's decision. So those are my views on that, somewhat limited in that it didn't really have any material impact, but either way, let me know what you think in the comments below. Please do make sure you subscribe to help my channel grow, and as always, thank you for watching.